Day three of painting the wilderness, my friend, and today we're going to focus on one of my most popular and requested tutorials, a misty forest. Hello, my friend. Welcome to day three of the Painting the Wilderness 10 Day Challenge. I'm so excited you're here. As a reminder, uh, to enter a giveaway to win a copy of my book, watch to the end of this video. I'll let you know what you have to do. And let's go ahead and get started on this misty forest. If you want to watch any of the previous videos in this challenge, make sure to go to the description. All of the links are there for you. So we're going to prep our watercolor journal uh, with washi tape. Basically, I'm taking washi tape in extra long ends and wrapping them around the journal just to help keep the paper that I'm painting on taut and together with the rest of the journal. And then I'm using binder clips to uh, keep the paper even more compressed. Now, this is not going to be a perfect solution. Your paper will warp and curl just a little bit because paper always will, but um, this kind of makeshift block solution does help a little bit. So for this misty forest scene, I'm going to start with the sky. It's going to be kind of like a cloudy gray sky. So I'm using the wet on wet technique, which means I got my whole paper all the way wet first. And in order to make gray, I am using Payne's gray and I'm mixing just a little bit of orange with Payne's gray. Orange and blue are complementary colors, which means that they are opposite each other on the color wheel. When you mix complementary colors together, you usually get some kind of neutral gray or brown or black, something like that. And so when I use a very, very dark Payne's gray, a very dark blue, and mix it with orange, I get this cool kind of gray color. And I got orange by mixing carmine with yellow ochre, by the way. So I'm starting with one layer of that gray sky and I let it dry and then I re-wet my page and I'm creating, uh, I used a little bit darker value, which means more paint to water ratio, just to create some kind of cloudy textures in the sky. Uh, keep in mind here that I am not trying to make anything perfect by any means. It's okay if your sky is just kind of a bunch of different blobs. So I let that dry. And now I'm going to paint the very first layer of this misty forest. As you can see, it is a very, very, very light, meaning very watery color. It is a little bit of Hooker's Green with a little bit of Payne's Gray. Hooker's Green and Payne's Gray are the two colors that I'm going to be using basically from here on out. And in order to complete this mountain layer, I used that very, very light watercolor and created this kind of crooked mountain layer and made it really wet. And then I'm taking my size two brush and just painting some loose lines uh, across the mountain layer in order to look like pine trees. Um, evergreen trees that are lining the ridge of that mountain layer. This is the very, very back of this layered misty forest that we're creating. So you're not really going to be able to see it very well. It's okay if you make mistakes. Generally, it's okay if you make mistakes, but especially in these back mountain layers, we we're painting them so light to create depth. And so they don't need to be perfect. In fact, it'll be even cooler if they're not, if they're a little crooked and imperfect. And um, so there's really no need to worry about that. Now I let that first layer dry and all the way, and I'm doing another layer using the same technique with just a little bit darker values. Darker meaning there's just a little bit more paint in there um, than the first layer. And that's because when we're trying to create depth, we start light and then get darker with each layer. If something is lighter, that means it's farther away. That's a pretty important rule when thinking about depth for um, landscapes in general. For far away things, you want to paint them, paint them light. And for closer up things, you want to paint them darker or more vibrant. So that's kind of the rule that we're going to be using for this misty forest scene. And uh, so I completed that second layer basically the same way that I did the first layer, except that 
I made the trees a little bit bigger. That's also an important rule to remember for uh, landscapes is generally if something is far away, it's smaller. And if something is closer, it's bigger. So lighter and far away means we're creating far away depth. And I mean, lighter and smaller and closer and and bigger and darker means it's getting closer. So for this third layer, I... Uh, I, instead of getting my layer wet just with paint, I got it wet with clean water and uh, I'm using an even darker, although not very dark, it's still kind of like a middle, a middle ground value there, using even darker paint and even bigger trees, I'm just painting along that wet ridge line. Now, as you do this method where you paint the mountain ridge so it's very wet and then paint the trees directly into the mountain, your, layer, your mountain layer will probably dry. And so it's going to be really important for you to kind of re-wet and work with your mountain layer as you're painting the trees so that you don't get as, so you don't get dried paint lines. Because if you let your mountain layer get too dry, the paint is going to dry before you get a chance to blend it in. So after that third layer is dry, I am doing a fourth layer. This whole scene, honestly, is just layers and layers of trees. But as we're getting uh, closer up, instead of making the trees very like close together and full, I want to try to create, to leave behind some like textured lines, to leave behind some trunks that are still showing. And so some of these trees I'm going to make a little sparser than before. If you want to know how I paint trees, um, generally, I just paint a thin line with some blobs on either side. I do a little bit uh, more in-depth of a demonstration on other YouTube videos like my beginner explainer video, which is linked in the description here. Um, but as we go through these layers, the trees are going to get a little bit more defined and that kind of starts with this layer. So we're painting individual trunks and then we're painting blobs on either side and this is gonna be a messy, quick process. The thing with these mountain layers is you want to paint them quicker so that you can actually blend them together. Another cool thing you can do with these mountain layers is to, while that layer, that layer underneath the trees is still wet, to add some clean water and just kind of push it up or push it down from the trees. While the water is, while the paint is still wet, just like move it around to reveal the white space underneath to create a misty effect. So this is called a misty forest, right? And in order to create mist, what that means we need to elevate the white space. And so that's what we're going to do with the water. When, the, when that mountain layer is dry, I mean, when that mountain layer is still wet, you want to keep it wet long enough so that you can um, you can push away some of the paint and have some of that white space show through. So that was layer four. There are a lot of layers in this piece. And as we keep getting closer, as we keep painting more layers, the layers are getting darker and they're getting bigger. So this layer, layer five, it's kind of actually like a half layer, an in-between layer, where I'm, I want this layer of trees mostly to act as kind of texture. I want them to be very sparse, not have tons of needles. And uh, I want the trunks of this layer to show through in the previous, in the neck, in the layers to come, basically. So this is for the record. This is kind of an experiment for me. Often when I do Misty Forests, I just kind of make every layer the same. And so as you're watching me do this kind of in-between layer where I'm purposefully leaving some of the trunks without needles, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. It can be, it's a lot easier, uh, especially for beginners, just to paint the trees basically all the same, that kind of full uh, tree width that's totally okay if that's what you want to do. But if you do want to add some textures, like I'm kind of experimenting with in a really messy way, then you know making sure to leave some of the trunks without needles on them is one way to do that. So 
Uh, that is the next layer. As you can see, I was painting it and I'm doing the same thing with this layer that I've done with previous, which is I'm painting the trees by painting the mountain layer first, making sure it's very wet and then painting the trees directly into the mountain layer and using water to move the paint around to create this mist that's gathering underneath the trees. So uh, just like the others, I let that layer dry all the way and then I am painting another layer. This time I didn't paint mist underneath because this is another kind of texture layer where I want, um, I want this to kind of just be a layer of trees behind to, for added depth, basically. Um, but for these texture layers, just to repeat myself once again, you don't necessarily have to uh, paint them the way that I'm doing. You can just do every layer the same way, painting the mountain first, leaving it very wet, and then painting the trees on top. I know I'm repeating myself a lot. That's because uh, it's a process that works every time. And I just want to make sure that, you know, in case I'm going too fast or in case this is um, a little, if this is maybe the first time you've seen a misty forest seen like this, you understand it's actually, uh, the process is actually pretty simple because every layer is the same. You just make sure to vary the trees and make sure that uh, for the farthest for to create depth, the farthest layers are lighter and smaller and the closest layers are bigger and darker. If I want you to remember anything, it's that. <laughs> so for this second to last layer, um, I'm using a, uh, a dark, as you can see, kind of dark green. Once again, in case you forgot, I'm mixing this dark green using Hooker's Green and Payne's Gray. Um, I am painting the trees to be uh, a little more sparse, maybe have a little bit more character to them, a little more imperfect. And I had to re-wet the layer underneath the trees. So that's because uh, the more paint you use, um, so for these layers that are in the foreground, the more paint you use, the faster they're going to dry. So for the layers in the front, you're definitely probably going to want to re-wet before you go all the way across the mountain ridge. Um, so as you can see, I kind of painted half of the trees first, and then I re-wet the mountain layer before moving on to the other trees. I'm also painting the trunks here starting from the bottom and then lifting up lightly before getting to the top. That's one way to keep the trunks of, uh, the top of your trunks really like sharp and pointed in case it's difficult to get that with, um, starting going from the top down. So I do it both ways. Um, I, I think both ways work really well. That's just a, another way that you can do it. So now I'm blending some of this paint in just to create a little bit more mist. And this is the final layer of this scene. I'm not even doing, um, you know, the mountain layer underneath it. These are the tops of trees that are kind of poking into the scene. And then I switched my brush. I was using a size two before. Now I'm using a size six, starting from the bottom. I'm doing a big tree uh, right in the foreground to kind of capture your attention. And as you can see, I'm making this tree super imperfect, super crooked, um, and just doing kind of random blobs on either side of this trunk. I'm not making it very full. I'm making it pretty sparse. Um, and if you're looking at this thinking, oh, she probably, I wonder why she's not telling us exactly why she put branches where she did. That's because I don't know. I just kind of eyeballed it. And the thing about painting trees and painting misty forests like this is it's a practice in patience and it's a practice in living in discomfort. This scene, as you can probably tell, is pretty messy. It's pretty eclectic but trees are like that. I don't know if you've been in a forest before or if you've seen scenes like this, but trees are wild and sometimes they're not pretty and they're sharp and jagged all over the place. And so the thing that has honestly made me the most 
uh, adept at painting trees like this is to get more comfortable being uncomfortable. So I painted that big tree and then right along the bottom, I did some scumbling, which is a technique we practiced on day one, basically just making random marks um, and maybe doing some grass poking out of it, some sticks poking out. There, there wasn't any particular rhyme or reason. I just wanted it to look like there was some kind of foliage peeking up from the bottom. And that wraps up this misty forest. So, you know, I've talked a lot about how this is messy. This process is messy, but I think it looks absolutely beautiful. The key to misty forests, again, is to capture that luminosity, to capture, um, you know, the white space of the mist coming up from the paper. And so as long as you can do that, as long as you can create kind of little pockets of white space in your mountain layers, you're going to get that luminous effect and it's going to look pretty cool. So now let's do my favorite thing, which is to think about what I loved and what I learned in this painting. I loved the pockets of white space. I loved the big foreground tree. And I really loved the dark green mix that I got from Hooker's Green and Payne's Gray. Things that I learned, maybe I want a more gradual color shift because I think some of the layers got lost in each other. Um, I learned dragging up for trees is very helpful. Um, I also learned to tolerate more imperfection. The more I'm able to tolerate that imperfection, the more curious and the more I'm going to discover in my art. And that is something that always just makes me so grateful for this process. So thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment if you want to win a copy of my book, if you want a chance at that, and I'll see you next time.